Hi artists, this is Mrs. Spooner. Welcome to the studio. Today we're going to be looking at um, three winter scenes from a famous artists that you have probably heard about. Before we do, take a minute to listen to the sights and sounds. The two questions that I want you to consider throughout the lesson that you'll be able to answer by the end are, how do the artists in this lesson use images and color to tell a story about winter? And how can you create a wintry scene that shows the illusion of space or depth and expresses what a snowy day feels like? Brr, it's cold outside, but let it snow because we are going to be looking at three artists, as I said, and discussing how they create a scene that truly makes it feel cold. The first artist we're going to look at is named Udagawa Hiroshige. He was a Japanese artist who was a master of color woodcuts. He was considered the last great master of that tradition. He was widely popular in his homeland and far beyond its borders because his prints were able to be mass produced. His work influenced impressionists like Van Gogh and Monet. The Great Wave of Kanagawa is one of his most famous paintings. This is a portrait of the artist, but today we're interested in the snowy scene. It's called The Night at Kimbara. As we take a close look at this, what do you notice about the clothing of the individuals in this piece? What about their hats? Are those hats that would be worn by people today? No. They reflect the time and the culture of the artist. Let's take a look at the scene. What about the background? Is there any color? It's very gray and white and conveys a very cold, bitter scene. What about the people? Look at their footprints in the snow. Look at the homes. Look how close they are together and the mountains that they're tucked in between. What do you think when you look at this picture? The next artist we're going to discuss is Edvard Munch. Munch. Um, he was uh, a Norwegian painter. He battled severe illnesses as a child and often had to miss a lot of school. And as a result, he spent much of his time indoors creating art. He's best known for his work, The Scream which has become one of the most iconic images of the art world. It's the one pictured right here. This is a portrait of the artist. And the one we're going to be discussing today is called New Snow in the Avenue. So let's take a closer look at this piece. There's a lot more color in the background than the first one. Are the colors warm or cool? You're right, they're cool colors. Blues, purples, greens. Cool colors, as they're appropriately named, kind of make you feel cold or uh, sad or wanting. Um, how about the people? What do you notice about the hats on their heads? You're right, they're also similarly pointy. However, they're different because those hats reflect the time and culture of this artist. Do you see footprints in the snow behind them? No, interesting.
The next artist we're going to look at is named Vasily Kandinsky. He was a Russian painter and an art theorist. He was inspired by color and believed he could use it to convey emotion. Kandinsky is generally credited as the pioneer of abstract art. This is one of his most, uh, one of his more well-known pieces on the right. This is a portrait of the artist. You can see him painting in his studio. And this one titled Winter Landscape is the one we're going to focus on today. So what do we notice that's different about this scene? Once again, we can see the cool colors reflecting the snow and the cold. But what else do we notice? You're right, there's a lot of warm colors in this piece. Yellow, orange, pink, peach. How does this one make you feel? Is it different from the last? Have you ever woke up on a snowy morning when the sun is just coming above the horizon? Have you ever noticed how the warmth and the yellow glow from the sun reflects on the snow? Do you think this maybe is what he was trying to convey? Next, I'm going to show you a video on what our project is going to be. Take a listen. Hi friends, I hope you enjoyed learning about our three artists um, and talking about how they created their beautiful um, wintry wonderland scenes. Um, and we're going to be creating one of our own today. I have a bunch of supplies out here. Feel free to use absolutely anything um, or everything that you have. Um, you can use crayons, colored pencils, markers, watercolors. If you'd like to collage, you might want to get out some uh, scissors or glue sticks, but that's going to be completely up to you. And um, feel free to also just keep it simple with um, a pencil drawing and crayons if you choose. Um, so again, we're going to be creating our own winter landscapes. So I'm going to put out these things for inspiration. Okay. As we create our scenes, we're also going to try to make them look like uh, they go back in space. Um, there are six different tricks that artists use to create a sense of depth or space in a picture. Um, but we're going to use, we're going to talk about three of them today. Um, size, overlapping, and placement. So placement refers to where something is at on a page. If it's lower on the page, that means that it's closer to us. And the higher up something goes up on a page, the farther away it is. So for example, on your picture, if it helps you to create different lines across your page. You can do that. So I know on this plane, this is the closest to me. This would be in the middle. And this is the farthest away. Now size, if something is close to me, it's going to be much bigger. So if I had a snowball on this hill, it's going to look big because it's right in front of me. And as it gets further away, this would be like the base of a snowman. It would be very big, I guess. Uh, and the, the higher it gets, the farther away from me it gets, the smaller it's going to be. So we're going to keep that in mind when we are working on our scene. Now, I am not going to um, have you watch me do an entire drawing, but I've likely sketched something out already so that I can quickly kind of show you how to get to the middle point. Um, so, sort of like how I just showed you, I started with some lines just to kind of show me 
where my different levels are. And in my winter scene, I wanted to have some nice, beautiful palm, tree, or palm trees. <laughs> that would be Florida. Pine trees. My goodness. As you get to know me and watch more of my videos, you'll see that um, I'm actually super silly. So I'll probably make a lot of silly mistakes, but you know what? There really are no mistakes in art. Um, that's kind of why I love it. Because you can do anything you want, anything that's in your head, anything in your imagination, and it's okay. It'll be wonderful. So this is my uh, biggest pine tree. It's the closest to me because it's the furthest down on the page. And notice that it's the tallest, or it's going to be the tallest. This one is higher up on the page. It's a little bit smaller. And this one, oh, the thing that I forgot to mention on the other page was overlapping. So if this one looks like it's tucked behind that one, I'll know that it's smaller, it's the highest up on my hill, and it's the smallest. Let's see, I also am gonna create a little path coming forward. And let's say the path goes off this way and wraps back around. Right to the door of my house. It has been completely covered in snow during this blizzard that I'm drawing. When I first started to sketch this out, it took me a, a long time, actually, and I erased a lot, so don't think, whoa, Mrs. Spooner, I, I can't draw, I can't do anything like that. Um, please take your time. Always take your time. It's never a race, um, never rush. And, and don't worry. Just have fun, and whatever it looks like, it's going to be okay. Because it's all about the process and creating and having fun and... Um, very rarely do my drawings actually look exactly like what I had in my head. Um, a lot of times it changes as I go along, and I think that's kind of the great thing about art, too. So this is some nice uh, smoke billowing out of the chimney because there's a fire going on this wintry cold day. I want you to get very detailed um, with your drawing. Don't just stop at um, basic shapes. Keep adding to it. Here I drew the house, and now I'm going to draw some of the siding on the house. I drew icicles hanging off of the rooftop. The window. If you want to draw things inside of the windows, if you want to draw snow built up on the windows. Let's see, I have a moon. It's going to be a nighttime winter scene. The little snow is still coming down here and there. Oops, I got so excited about the snow. I stopped with my house. do that sometimes even with my own artwork I'll start working on one thing and then I get so excited with a part and never come back and then it ends up being completely different um, than I, what I thought it would be but that's okay a lot of times um, that actually works out better so if you want to add people in your winter scene you can or no people buildings just if you want it to uh, be nature and have uh, trees and snowy hills or birds or deer or whatever animals um, aren't hibernating that are still out and about in the winter time. It is completely up to you. Okay, um, so I'm gonna stop with the drawing right there. Like 
I said, when you start to color it, um, you can use crayons or markers, you can paint it, um, whatever it is you'd like to use is okay. I'm actually going to start over here with the snowman, and no, I am not going to um, color this whole picture in front of you, that would be very boring to watch. Um, but I just want to show you that I like to switch up the materials that I'm using sometimes. So maybe I want to use some marker to start. And then maybe I want to add crayon around it and make it look like that's swirling up. That's a little hard to see. Um, maybe I want to go in with some colored pencil for my shading or um, other paints. Oh, hold on. I was playing classical music. Okay, um, when you are all finished with your drawing or your painting or whatever it is, if you would like to collage materials on top of that, you are more um, than able to do that. For example, this is something that my uh, third grader made, my son. Um, he used, and I'll show you later in this video, he used uh, construction paper and he cut it up to make his house. So if you wanted to make a house or a tree and add that into your wintry scene, uh, that would be a wonderful thing to do. If you have, um, if you don't have construction paper and you want to use magazines or um, maybe you have a book that your little brother or sister tore up and you were about to throw it away, you could use the pages of the book. Um, anything that you have in your house. If you have pictures of you and your family um, in a winter scene and you have permission and you'd like to cut um, you out, you could do that and add it to the picture. Uh, so whatever you would like to do to create your beautiful wintry scene um, that shows depth, like it's going back in space. All right, I can't wait to see what you make. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video and that you are excited to get started on your own winter scene. First, I just want to review one more time before you set out on your own. Um, there are actually six different ways of creating space or the illusion of uh, depth in a work of art. Um, but we're going to focus on just three of them. Um, like I said, the first one that we were looking at was placement. So, for example, this little boy is closer to us in the scene because he is at the bottom of the page. These children are a little bit further. And then these people at the top of the hill, they're higher up in the page, are the farthest from us. Size is the second indicator that we were going to use. Notice that the boy is larger than the people at the very top of the hill. So the farther away, the smaller they get and the higher up they go. Overlapping was the third way that we were going to create a sense of space or depth in our piece. We can tell that the people at the top of the hill are standing in front of the house because they are overlapping. They're in front of this space right here. In the demonstration video, I showed you a house that my son made. This is the bulletin board inside of our classroom at home. So my students are also um, learning remotely. And we've created this bulletin board in their classroom and we're working on it over time. You can see snowflakes and um, houses and wintry trees. So it's still a work in progress, but we are having fun with that. So I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and that you are so excited to get started on your own uh, wintry wonderland. Um, Clover and I are just gonna be hanging out in the studio and we can't wait to see what you all produce. See you soon, bye.